and we'll start tonight's devotion with a reading from Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 18. Don't get mad at me about the way that I say that. Of what value is an idol carved by a craftsman or an image that teaches lies? For the one who makes it trust in his own creation, he makes idols that cannot speak. Last week, we discussed how our greed can cause us to settle for the temporary pleasures that the world offers. We looked at the first chapter of Daniel and saw how, even though it would have been an honor to eat from the king's table, he declined so that he would not risk disobedience to God, and for it, he was blessed. He did not take what was seemingly the best and took the less exciting route of eating vegetables to deny himself an earthly pleasure so that he may receive the greater gifts of God. With this, we examine the patrons of the mall from Little Nightmares, and how the mall was a place where the rich could indulge in their hedonistic cravings. But it was this indulgence that would ultimately cost them their lives. With this in mind, let's take a closer look at the one who owns the mall. For tonight, let's ask the question, who is the lady? Seriously, I, I'm asking who is she, because in game it is never very clear and leaves you with more questions than answers. But this is what we are able to gather about her character. This tall and seemingly beautiful young woman is obsessed with beauty. We can watch in the ladies' quarters as she sits in front of a mirror brushing her hair continuously. But upon closer examination, we notice that not only this mirror, but all mirrors in her quarters are shattered. Her hair finally kept, but the image she sees in the shattered mirror is not her own, as she wears a porcelain geisha mask to hide her true visage. She seeks to feed an idol of vanity. It compels her and leaves her obsessed with herself. But this is a continual process she must feed, or the very thing she holds on to will be lost forever. Now, typically, we think of idols as a statue or some created image that we obsess over. But idols can be anything. And scripture tells us that we can even set idols up in our hearts. When these desires are established, we begin to fall. We do things that we never would have thought ourselves capable of doing. And as we try to satisfy the idol that provides a temporary pleasure, it creates chaos in our lives. 2 Samuel chapter 11, verses 2-5 through five. One evening, David got up from his bed and walked around on the roof of the palace. From the roof, he saw a woman bathing. The woman was beautiful, and David sent someone to find out about her. The man said, She is Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, and the wife of Uriah the Hittite. Then David sent messengers to get her. She came to him, and he slept with her. Now, she was purifying herself from her monthly uncleanliness, and we're not going to touch on that. (laughs) Then she went back home. The woman conceived and sent word to David, saying, I am pregnant. So, in our passage, we have King David, a mighty servant of God, in the beginning phases of losing his mind. David was not a lonely man, but this one night, he went walking, and when his eyes caught a glimpse of something he shouldn't see, he does what many of us do. He takes a second glance. He begins to obsess and even sends his men to find out who she is because now he's got to have her in his life. The first glance was the shock to the system, but the second longer glance is the one where he was hooked. He created this idea in his head that he needed this woman in his life and he was going to see to it that she was his, even though she was already married. And then she gets pregnant. Now David is in a panic as he tries to cover up and hide his mistake. 2 Samuel chapter 11, 6-9 says, So David sent this word to Joab, Send me Uriah the Hittite. And Joab sent him to David. When Uriah came to him, David asked him how Joab was, how the soldiers were, and how the war was going. Typical small talk. Then David said to Uriah, Go down to your house and wash your feet. So Uriah left the palace, and a gift from the king was sent after him. But Uriah slept at the entrance to the palace with all his master servants and did not go down to his house. David tries multiple times to have Uriah be sent home so that he may be with his wife and the child she will conceive be thought to be his. It's like one of those teen soap operas. But Uriah is committed to David 
and his fellow brothers in arms. It's got a sting. So at this point, David is in a panic. He even tries to get Uriah drunk and sent home, but even then he still goes and sleeps on a mat amongst the servants instead of going home to be with his wife. So David is left with only one choice to cover his mistake. He has to have Uriah killed in battle so that he may marry her and cover this whole debacle up. Because of a second peak, Bathsheba became pregnant. Because of a second peak, Uriah had to die. But David is not the only one guilty of this. We all create idols in our hearts that we attempt to indulge. We allow these things that we place above all else control our thoughts, actions, and morals. And since these things are man-made, they are inconsistent as our morals and actions are justified in a way that suits our present needs so that we are not denied whatever it is we want. David's idol was one of lust, but an idol can be anything, an addiction, vengeance, greed, a person, even happiness. But you say, that's ridiculous. How can happiness be an idol? Little fact about happiness, it's fleeting. Your happiness is entirely dependent on external forces that can bring your emotional state up or down in a matter of seconds. I can tell you, everyone listening right now is going to be mailed a check for $500, and you would think that's awesome and naturally become happy about this. I can then follow that statement up with, I changed my mind, and, and I do change my mind by the way, and that mood will drop. That happiness is entirely dependent on the inconsistent chance that things will happen as we want them to, and it is not sustainable. But when you crave happiness and seek to obtain that at the cost of your morals, health, and sanity, can this elusive creature ever be found? But this is what we create idols for, so that we can find happiness of a fleeting variety. We catch the high for a little bit, but ultimately, we will come crashing down because these idols can do nothing to hold us up because they are not alive. We know that God is a jealous God. However, he's not jealous for us because of vanity or greed, but because he knows every idol we put our faith in will inevitably leave us feeling hollow as we fill up on things that are not sustainable. But serving the living God, he provides us with joy that remains even during the lowest points of our life when we have no clue how to get out of this. Psalm 1611, you make known to me the path of life. In your presence there is fullness of joy. At your right hand are pleasures forevermore. David does not get away with this behavior though. For the choices that he made, David loses his child and calamity is to come upon him. This will always be the result of indulgence of the flesh. We can maybe hide it for a little while, but it will eventually surface and make itself known. And with its arrival, a price will be paid for the happiness we received through the self-gratification. A price that will often leave us broken and ashamed. Do you remember the lady from earlier and her idol of vanity? Well. It's believed that the purpose for the maw is so that she may allure the patrons in to feast and then steal their life force so that she can retain her youth and beauty. But remember the mirrors are all broken and she wears a mask to hide her true face. So even though she has these things the, and the happiness it brings her, it's all superficial. She cannot even see it herself. There is one mirror in her home that is not broken but it is hidden in a secret room in the back of her house. And when Six takes this mirror to her, a blinding light is created and the lady is ultimately struck down by it. We can justify our actions all we want. This is an option, it's available to us. But let me present you some truth. Anything that we attempt to fill our lives with that is not Jesus is self-harm. Idols break, and they break us with them. The lady killed and was herself killed in a futile attempt to satisfy her idol. David lost his child and had calamity strike him and his family as punishment for feeding his idol of lust. They are feeble and temporary, but Jesus is eternal, and he is able to mend the broken pieces. We only have to ask what it is we want more. 
to be happy for a little bit or take shelter in the joy of the Lord. Psalms 511, but let all who take refuge in you be glad. Let them ever sing for joy. Spread your protection over them that those who love your name may rejoice in you. The story of David is such a great one to examine when looking at our follies, how much God still loves us. Think about it. David, the one they call a man after God's own heart, fell prey to a selfish man-made idol. God still redeemed him out of the mire and it was his line from which our savior was born. Even though we, we may be enthralled with an idol currently, that does not mean we have to stay appeasing it. Idols are breakable and we can break free of this vice, this addiction, this crutch and shatter these chains that attempt to enslave us in a leeching relationship of self-destruction as we chase a fleeting idea of happiness that cannot be achieved because the happiness these things provide is not what we should choke down but rather we should drink from the well of life that provides joy, that pulls you through the darkness, that lifts you up when you fall, that strengthens you in defeat as we proclaim we don't want the temporary trash this world offers up for us to greedily consume, but we will take Jesus over all because Jesus is all we need for this life and the next. And our world quest for this week is, what idols do we have in our lives? What is it we believe will bring us happiness? If we have it, it's time to shatter it and become free. Pray on it. And I'm going to be honest, you may have a couple of them in your home. I know I do. But regardless, that blood is more than enough to set you free and wash you clean. I love you guys.